Turn up, let's do Shelly, right? The grandchildren of Patrick Casey, who was the man in the council in 1922 who proposed the purchase of the grounds here and was bought for £6,000 at the time, which I forgot to mention anyway. So if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. I'm Paddy O'Reilly. And Aileen O'Brien. And Don Lurie. Alfred Road, Gokke in the top of the and I'm also heard that Nadini a come on Smynev con on on Archer on Sea on Akasha Kirak or the winter a vita vile Balia Frali and a Kate to Blino Hen. You're all very welcome. It's great to see you all. It's a lovely turnout today. We thought we might have it had we might have a half a dozen or maybe six or seven or eight on, on the weather we had in the time of the year, but it's a lovely turnout and it's a great tribute to the people who uh, conceived of the idea uh, way back in 1922 that Tralee needed a place for more houses and open air recre recreation and that there was this open space available to us at the time. Now we go back to the, year, to the mid 1600s when this land, all of Tralee, all that was only a fraction of the size of the town that we have now, uh, was, was given to the Denny family, Edward Denny in particular because he was successful in, in arresting and holding on to the Earl of Desmond, uh, Fitzgerald. So he was given 6,000 acres and more, and he held that, and the family held it for all those years, right up until the time that the castle was demolished in 1826. Now, this lodge was built by a man called Finnerty. Finnerty was the estate agent. He was a smart man in his day. He bought lands. He was given lands. He bought cheaply from the Denny family and he acquired other lands. And that's the reason why so many houses in Tralee would have been sold subject to payment of ground rents because the Finnerty and Bateman estates and others around the town owned the ground that many of the houses were built on. We have some famous people who lived in Denny Street, of course, Daniel O'Connell. Although he didn't live here, he owned one of the houses just down here. And just further down, we had the County Carry Club. And if you're strolling down that way afterwards, the sign is still on the door. And it was a club for officers of the British Army. During the Troubles, it was an active place. And some of the younger people in the movement at the time got jobs there just to listen to what was being discussed and bring word back to the rebels. Now, in that, that era of 1822 to 1826 was a time when the last Robert Denny and Barry Denny being the last two in the family who occupied the premises of the castle. The castle was about 500, 400 odd years old at the time, was in a state of poor repair. And they headed off to London, uh, better pickings, better life, brighter lights. And that's when Finnerty came in and bought the estate known as the Green. So. In 1920, when Tralee was more or less on fire with the activities of the Black and Tans and the, the rejection of the Republicans to their presence in Tralee and Kerry, uh, the several battles were fought. There were running battles fought up and down the street just below us here. Down in the square in Dominic Street, there was a serious shootout. So Tralee was full of hot history in the revolutionary period. But just before that, while this entire estate was the property of Finnerty, he bought, he bought the lands because it was 6,000 acres, I think I mentioned, that the Denny's got for nothing. And that was given by uh, Queen Elizabeth I because of his activity uh, in, in the interest of the realm. So when, when it came time, um, at, at 1920, when Tralee was burning literally, the Black and Tans burned the county hall. And the county hall facade is still in existence, just across the way from the Dominican church. And overhead, over the door, are the words county hall. Now, it might be the best favour that the Black and Tans ever did to Lee. Because by then, because of having no hall, the uh, decision was made by the town council, Tralee Urban District Council, to buy this land of 118 acres, as it was then, build the county hall and houses for the people of Tralee. Now about 90 houses are built in the green and the green extended from the gable end of the Collins's house, no relation to myself, on the top of Valley Mullen, all the way down to the wall over here which surrounds the car park of the Brandon car park. Then it started here, right alongside us, went way over to the river, 
and all the way right up to the, to the, the Collins area, taking in the big roundabouts at the post office, the uh, Munster Bar area there. So that was 118 acres. We now have Trukakui. We have 35 acres left out of all of that. And that's why <coughs> the said the Green Committee was formed in 1969. Now I'm delighted to welcome three people who have come to us today from Killarney. I didn't know them before. We just shook hands earlier and I didn't know they were coming. But it was their grandfather, Patrick Casey, whose name is mentioned on the little stone just inside the other gate down here. He was chairman of the council which proposed to buy the green for the townspeople. Can we have a warm welcome please? So it's a cold morning, I'm walking around and I don't, I don't feel it too much. Uh, the piper is wearing a kilt and he says he doesn't feel it either. So we, we have, uh, there's a number of ways of interpreting that I suppose. But, um, so we'll now proceed into the green itself. And um, we're going to be led by Dennis Patrick, our piper, who has always been very good to us. And I want to say also that we had got a message yesterday from the Mayor of Tralee, Mikey Sheehy, who had hoped to be here, but because of a previous engagement, he couldn't make it, but he is supportive of us. So we'll, I'd like you to stay together for this duration, because we'll do a countdown, and we'll follow by the piper now.
Council since the foundation of the State Green Committee in 1969, and during that time as well, we, um, we found the we were all quite young. I was quite a while ago, for the, for the, we found a youth group called the Young Idea. And I'm happy to say one of my colleagues in the formation of that is with us this evening, to this morning, and he's also a long time active and serving member of the Save the Green Committee. We went to school together. I think we started in third class when we had 54 in the class. At, at, at uh, class number five. Um, so your friend and mine and a great community man from Tralee, Kieran Moriarty, would like to say a few words now. Right, it, it's more on the north of the than so. It can or a cable in go will an Asha and Oscar to meet the trolley. It's a great honour for me to be here to commemorate the hundred years of the opening of the green for the people of Tralee. My wife's great grandfather had a key to the park way, way back. And at the turn of the last century, he was able to admit his family into the park. Now the reason being he had the key was he was a caretaker. Not everybody could gain access to the park. But from my youth, this place was heaven. Myself, Eddie Jennings, Michael Gaffney here, and the Belly Boys. That's the Belly Island Boys now I'm talking about. We, and Young Turner, sorry, you were a small bit older than us. You had the long pants, you only the short pants. We loved the marsh and the town park. The marsh was totally unique. It had the rocks, it had the green grass, it had the little bits of ponds, and it had the reeds. And our playground was uh, determined by the seasons of the year. In the summertime, we'd play football in the far green patch over near the river. We'd play cowboys and Indians in the rocks. But coming up to the winter, we'd have to move near, there I say, the Munster Bar and Michael Gaffney's house. There was a small green patch there because the rest of the park was waterlogged. And sometimes in the winter time, when there'd be ice, we could skate on the little bits of water that were there. In the summertime as well, we were able to fish in the river. And we obtained the bamboos and the rods down by Musgrave Bridge. We cut them ourselves and we go to slatteries to get the hooks and whatnot. And many of a family was fed in Bellymoran with the what came out of the big river, mostly eels. Now, what a change has happened to the marsh now. We have the Rose Hotel, we have the Aquadome, and we have the cinema. All great assets for Tralee. Now, as well as uh, come moving closer to the town, we had the green area which was, no, which was developed into St. John's Athletic Club. A fine asset for the town, and uh, the names that spring to mind there will be Christy Murray and Michael O'Regan. Both gave time and effort to developing the use of tree in the running. Then moving closer, we have the great center of excellence, which is known as St. Mary's Secondary School, better known as the Green. I'm, I'm a former pupil of that place, as well as with Tommy and quite a lot more of the young boys of Tralee. The Green served Tralee Town and West Kerry, North Kerry, anybody that went to school, secondary school, that wanted to further themselves, possibly, was sent to the Green by their parents. Now, it was good to me because I left the Green and along with 14 more of my leaving cert classmates, we went to Drumcondra Training College in Dublin to become teachers. And I, uh, I remember my first le maths lecture in Drumcondra, the professor was talking about a hypotenuse, and I was looking at him and scratching my head. <laughs> and I asked him to draw what the hypotenuse was, thinking that we had a river animal, 
and there he drew a, tri a right angle triangle with the hypotenuse opposite the right angle. And I said, Jesus, I never, I didn't say Jesus to him because I had to be more cultural, but I was able to tell him that that was a table god. And I quoted Pythagoras' theorem of square. Don can no guarantee the god, Gorum less and Dosh less than Carnog and on Dosh that era. He was amazed, so was I, that I could still repeat it. <laughs> but everything, most things were done in the green to Irish. It was in the green where we got our notions for education as well as other education, uh, the romantic type, but I'm not talking about you, Tolly. <laughs> but in the green as well, we formed the Young Idea. The Young Idea got its name from a band or a group that covered the beat of song with, with a little help from my friends. So, and we became active in watching what was going on in the town and especially what was going on in the green. Now, in the, the green was also used by the festival of Kerry. I see Lady over there looking at her watch. I'll be finished very shortly. Don't worry. It was used the last Sunday in August, and the green was packed the last Sunday in August because we had the donkey there. And thousands of people would come into the green and enjoy the donkey derby. And we had donkeys like this old factory and come when you like and then you all the people roaring and shouting and welcoming and saying goodbye to the donkeys. Now, a lot of that has gone. Thank you very much. I know that. <laughs> right, but to, to finally finish, the green is perfect for our town. And long may it stay. There's a load of towns are all over the country and we don't have a green. We have this centre of excellence as we call it, the Rose Garden. Anthony Moran and his crew have to be thanked for keeping the, the flora and for, uh, the flora in particular up to top class honours. In June every year now, instead of the donkey derby, we have uh, fail in the blood. It helps the town as well. So, with the sun shining, I'm going to finish. We're lucky to have what we have, and let's keep it that yes. way. Around here facing the sun, yes? Facing me. Facing Paddy. Yeah.
and uh, we will calm down. I just want to mention a few more things and people. Um, over here in the corner we have a little field known as Park and Fierce. Sometimes nowadays it gets called Pierce Park, but it was never named Pierce Park, it was named Park and Fierce. And it bounds the road, which is known as Fogel and Fierce. Um, that's, well, that began in 1979, the centenary of the birth of Paul Dickmark Pierce. And the committee got together, I remember proposing it on the night of Benner's Hotel, and uh, I have to remark on one tiger of a lady who worked the women were great in the same Green Committee, I should add. And uh, we mentioned uh, Mae O'Donnell in our previous commemoration in 2019. Mae was our secretary for a long time, her husband Paddy was the first chairman. But the woman in the seat in front of Mae Benner's turned around with a grin as white, there's the gates over there, her name was Susie Casey. And she saw straight away the value of the proposal because it was then going to be to honour public people and to retain that in the as part of the league. And I see Bob McCormick come here today and it's why it's, it should be mentioned. I mentioned earlier the our friends from Killarney, Paddy Casey, whose name is down here, he was the man who was the chairman of the purchase of the Green. And it was on this day, one hundred years ago, the fifth of February at twelve thirty five that the eats were lodged in Dublin. So can we get some of the children around here? We only have two volunteers at the moment. Three. Ron is behind. And we're coming up to the countdown. So here's our clock. It's a little bit older than myself. And now we can hold this and we'll do a countdown at 25 to 1, 100 years after the deeds were lodged in the registry office in Dublin. This is NASA. Can somebody else hold her? Hold the clock with her. It's fairly heavy. Any more volunteers? They don't have to be a child, of course. Come in, here, Lily Tangney, come in here. Lily recently is, Lily is our Secretary Emeritus. She retired recently as uh, Secretary of the State Degree Committee and put in the Veritas performance for many years. Okay, let's do a countdown. Will we do that square again? Yes. Okay. A ten, a nine, a nay, a hot, a shot, a shay, a cooey, a car, a tree, a doe, a hen, and this belongs to the people of Trilly. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Excellent. Are the photographers finished? No. No. We'll pause for a moment. Everyone looking at me now. And we'll see ourselves out with a lament. Everyone looking at me now. That is part of the first thing answer. Hold on, that's it. Is that good? The only problem where you have it, I can't um. see the green now. <laughs> <laughs> now, everyone looking forward, please and thanks. Yes. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Well, stay there for a second. One more now, look here. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank well, you. I want to mention as well this, I gave an idea at the back of my head to so a lovely lady who's come back to us from Boston, Caroline. Uh, her parents there, uh, Danny and Kay, Caroline Dunn, and she put this banner together in a couple of days, and I think it's a fantastic book to buy. So well done, Caroline. Let's hear it from Caroline. Hey, babe. That's it. Now I think we're started here with the cameras. Now in relation to Park and Fierce, Mihala Sulevan is over here. Mihala was the, the founding chairman of that committee and we stayed together until the business was done. It was Sean McBride who opened Pocket Fierce. It was his mother, Maud, Glenn McBride, who unveiled the Pike Man. It was pulled down by the Black and Hands in 1920, and Maud, Glenn, came back again and re-unveiled the Pike Man. It was taken down for spite, of course. It was positioned deliberately in front of the place that I mentioned, the County Carry Club, just down in the middle of Denny Street there positioned as close as it could be to the window of that so that when the British Army's officers were looking out they could see a bit of old decency on the pipe man to commemorate the 1798 revolution. So now we'll have, we, uh, we'll have a lament to remember all those who have passed. Uh, it's dangerous mentioning names I know on occasions like this because there's all those names forgotten and if we were to list everybody's name we could be here until the next hundred years because so many people have passed through the ranks of the same degree committee. But I can assure you one thing. 
Are we not including this fully? That there were many, many hours of research, consternation, almost conflagration between us and, and the, the council over issues regarding uh, changes that we felt were not feasible and, and uh, suitable for the Green. There were even roads proposed to be put in here, but we would not have succeeded without the backing of the people of Tralee. Because when issues arose, <coughs> they came out of the woodwork. But I do want to say that even though we have been at issue with the council from time to time, I want to thank them for what they have done for the Green. Because this is heaven to look around here at any time of the day, be it early morning or late in the evening. This Green is heaven and this is why we want to keep it. And I want to mention Paul and Andrew and his team and all the other workers who have done what they have done to the Green for so many years. Thanks be to God we're blessed with the weather and thank God we're blessed with the Green. Yeah, 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 yeah.